Hello guys, welcome to the tutorial. I hope you're all doing well. In this tutorial, we are gonna be building a multi-body system on MATLAB Simulink by using Simscape features. And we are gonna be doing that starting from scratch, so that once you finish the tutorial, you will have the knowledge to build your own models. And the model we will be designing in the tutorial is a kind of suspension system called MacPherson. And this is the final look of our model. Well, if you are ready, open up your MATLAB and let's get started. Ok, first of all we need to start the sim mechanics template. And to do that, we should type in smu on command window. Our workspace template is opened with the default blocks in it. These are some resources, I recommend you to check them out later, for now I'll drag them out of our workspace. And these are some blocks, we'll be using some of them throughout the tutorial, for now I'll delete them. This 3 block system is gonna be our world frame, or you can call it ground frame or space frame, but since Simulink calls it world frame, I'll call them world frame as well. The world frame is like a reference frame and it's gonna be our starting point. We'll start designing the model by attaching the bodies to world frame so they'll appear on space. Ok, about the bodies. You can design them in an AutoCAD software or you can design them within MATLAB. For our model, I designed it with an AutoCAD software. While I was designing them, I used hard points. And I strongly recommend you to use hard points while designing your own models. Because if you use hard points for a body part, that means you are designing that individual body part in a position and in the orientation which you will be using that body part in the assembly. And it's gonna eliminate the process of translation and orientation in Simulink. This may not sound as a problem at the beginning, but if you have so many body parts in your model, using hard points will simplify whole process and save you so much time. These are the hard points of our model and these are the coordinates of them. Now I'll start importing the individual body parts one by one. To do that, we'll use the block called file solid under this menu address in library browser. I have selected the body part and its type is step. I'll adjust the density value and I'm entering the values of STL. Now I click OK and I'm copying this block for every single body part. Since I have copied them, I have the values of STL for every single block. I have selected the bodies for every block. Now let's connect them to the world frame and see if it works. The model looks correct for now and the assembly was formed by default. That's why is we used hard points while designing the bodies and the position and orientation information was saved into the step files. I want to show you the difference between using hard points and not using them before we move on. But first, let's change the names of the body blocks so we won't mix them up. I'll design the body piston 1 within MATLAB. For that we need a cylindrical solid body block and we can find it in the same menu where we found file solid block. Let's drag it to our workspace and open it up to enter the values. Since we don't use hard points we need to use radius and length dimensions to build it. These are the values of our body piston one and we are changing the default density values to steels values. We designed our body and if we connect it to world frame directly the body will appear at the origin of the world frame by default. We have to specify its position and orientation manually. First, we have to rotate it around the x-axis. And we can find the angle of rotation by trigonometry. This is the angle value in radians. And we need to use it in negative because we rotate it around negative x-axis. For rotations and translations, we'll use the block called rigid transform. You can find it in library browser under this menu. We connect the body to rigid transform block. And we enter the rotation angle. Let's connect it to the world frame and see if it works. We rotated it correctly. And now we need to translate it to the position where we need it. Since the translation vector is gonna start from the origin of the world frame, and the body's center of mass is located at the origin, I need to use the coordinates of the body's center of mass when it's in the target position. I can find that coordinates by using hard points. And these are the coordinates I'll translate the body to. For translation process, I'll use another rigid transform block. I'll add it right after the rotation block because I need the translation after rotation. I'm entering the target coordinates and changing the unit to millimeters. Now let's connect it to world frame. I translated the body correctly and now I have it in position and orientation how I need it. And the reason we can't see entire body highlighted is that the body coincided with the previous body part. And it stays behind of it. This 3 block system is our new piston one. So let's create a subsystem from them. 
And now we can start connecting the joints. But before that, I wanna show you an example joint connection, so you can understand the logic behind it better. Right now, we have all our bodies connected to world frame directly. Which means they are all fixed to world frame. Let's see what happens if I add a joint between one of them. All joints are under this menu in library browser. For this test, I wanna use 6 degree of freedom joint. Because it allows the body to move without any constraints. Let's drag it our workspace and connect it between lower control arm and world frame. Let's run the simulation and see the results. And as you can see, lower control arm starts falling in the direction of gravity. And that's the reason is that body is connected to world frame through a joint right now, and that joint allows the body to move according to its features. In our suspension model, we have a revolute joint between lower control arm and world frame. Let's find it under the same menu, and connect it between them. Run the simulation to see if it works. The body doesn't move and that's because the revolute joint was connected in a wrong direction. And also the position of the revolute joint is wrong. You may have guessed that's the reason, because we have faced that issue before while creating piston 1. Because we didn't enter any position or orientation information, the revolute joint took place right at the origin of the world frame. We need to translate it somewhere on the line between hard points number 1 and 3. For this model, I'll translate it to hard point number 1. But the thing is, we can't directly translate it, because we have already connected it to a body, so any translation or orientation block we'll add after the joint will also affect the body. Therefore, we'll use a tactic like this. First, we'll translate the body in a direction to make the revolute joint coincide with the point. After that, we'll translate the body and revolute joint together to body's original position. In this way, we'll have the revolute joint right at the position where we need it. And we'll use this method for other joints as well. First, we are translating the body before we connect it to revolute joint. And the translation vector is basically the opposite vector of hard point number 1. So I'm using opposites of its coordinates and changing the unit to millimeters. Let's run the simulation. And as you can see body mode and the revolute joint coincided with the point. Now let's translate them all back. To do that, we'll add another rigid transform block right after the revolute joint. So it will affect every single block before it. And the coordinates are basically the coordinates of arc point number 1. Now let's run the simulation. And our body is now in its original position. And the revolute joint is right at the point where we need it. But the problem is, the body should start oscillating, but it doesn't move. And this reason is, revolute joint allows the body rotate around one axis. And that axis is the z-axis of revolute joint. Therefore, we should rotate the revolute joint to make its z-axis parallel to the line between hard point number 1 and 3. And we can do that by the method we use to translate the revolute joint. After we translate the body, we should add another rigid transform block to rotate it. And the rotation angle is gonna be 90 degrees around y-axis. And now we should re-rotate them all. Let's run the simulation and see the results. And the body starts oscillating properly. Now let's translate them all back. We have completed lower control arm body. So I'll create a subsystem from them to make it look clear. Let's continue with adjusting the body strut. Body strut is not connected to world frame. It's connected to lower control arm. So first let's connect it to lower control arm. We can connect it right here. And now let's run the simulation and see the results. Because we didn't use any joints between them, they are fixed to each other and they move together. We should have a spherical joint between them. Let's connect it and run the simulation. As you may have guessed, it took place right at the origin. We should translate it with the method we translated revolute joint to the hard point number 2. We have added necessary rigid transform blocks, and now the spherical joint is right at the correct position. Now let's adjust the body tie rod. Tie rod is connected to both world frame and strut. It's already connected to world frame, so let's connect it to strut as well. We need a spherical joint between them, and we should translate the spherical joint to the hard point number 5. And we should add another spherical joint between tie rod and world frame. We have adjusted these bodies correctly. Let's create subsystems from them to make them look clearer. Now let's adjust the bodies piston 1 and 2. Piston 1 is should be fixed to strut. 
So basically let's connect them to each other without making any adjustment. And about the piston 2, it should be both connected to world frame and piston 1. First let's adjust its connection to world frame by adding a spherical joint between them. And translate the spherical joint to hard point number 8. And the simulation works correctly so far. Now let's connect piston 1 to piston 2. We should connect piston 1 from here because this whole unit is piston 1 itself. And that's because it's the position and orientation blocks we have added at the beginning of the tutorial. Therefore we can't connect piston 2 to piston 1 from here. We should connect piston 1 to piston 2 with a cylindrical joint. And the position of the cylindrical joint should be somewhere on the line between hard points number 7 and 8. For this model I'll translate it to the position of hard point number 10. The cylindrical joint is right at the correct position, but its orientation is wrong. A cylindrical joint allows the bodies slide along the z-axis of it. That's why we need to rotate the cylindrical joint to make its z-axis parallel to the pistons. We can do it with the same method we used before. Let's run the simulation and see the results. The model is working properly so far. Now we should add a spring damper force between piston 1 and 2. We can find that force under this menu. Drag and drop that to our workspace and directly connect to bodies. You can adjust these values as you want. For this model I'll use these values. And also, just like the joints, we need to translate it to somewhere between hard points 7 and 8. For this model, I'll use the position of cylindrical joint. Let's run the model. It moves just a little because the spring force is trying to resist to the movement due to the gravitational force. Well, congratulations, this is your finished model. Now you can perform analysis with your model. As the last section of the tutorial, I'll show you how you can apply a force to your model. I'll apply the force in Z direction from the hard point number 4. First, we need to add the necessary block called external force and torque. Then I'll basically connect it to the strut. If I run the model, the force is gonna take place right at the origin. So we need to translate it to the point where we want to apply the force from. And also in force block, we'll take the force in Z direction. After that, an input port appears. Now we can enter a force with constant block. But we cannot connect them directly. Because the types of the air signals are different. One is a simulink signal and the other one is physical signal. So we need to use a converter. Now they get connected and you can use different input values and see their results. As the last move, I'll add a sine wave and multiply it with the constant block. Also, let's change the colors of the bodies. And here we are, our final model. You have learned all the steps to build a model using Simscape. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on social media. See you on the next tutorials.